I've been working on a dictionary of Juchitan Zapotec um, with a project for the documentation of the languages of Mesoamerica. I started this work in 2003. Um, writing a dictionary involves a tremendous amount of work. Uh, work that I find fascinating, of course, um, but it's a great deal of, um, it's a lot of work. Um, let me just give you an idea of how I've worked and um, what's involved in writing a dictionary. First of all, you need to work, of course, with a uh, native speaker of the language. Basically, you sit down with someone and um, you have stimuli, for example, books with illustrations on particular topics to stimulate the person to speak um, and to use her language or his language. And you start recording. So for example, um, I've worked with um, pencil and data slips. And for example, here um, you have a very simple example of a very important word and um, very common word, the word Nisa, which is water. And so um, in working with a speaker, uh, the person would give me the word um, I would write, write down a translation of the word into Spanish. I would code here uh, what stimulus I was using. This particular stimulus, stimulus was a picture book um, that I used to just have uh, topics to talk about. Um, and I code the language and the year when this, um, the field season and the year. Now, let me show you some of these um, data slips, which are uh, some of my favorites. As, as I had mentioned before, I'm very interested in the semantics of spatial relations. So how do you say um, a cup is on the table? Um, how do you express uh, the location of one object with, relations, uh, with relation to another? Um, I start getting interested in that because as it turns out that in Zapotec languages, um, a lot of objects can be, the parts of objects can be talked about by using um, terms that relate to body parts of, of the human or an animal body. So, for example, in uh, Juchitan, uh, the arm is na, uh, the leg is ñe, uh, the head is ike, the belly is ndani. And, um, for example, in, uh, with regards to a hammock, which are very common in the Juchitan area because it's very hot and it's better to sleep in a hammock than it is to sleep in a bed. Um, you can also talk about the parts of the hammock. So the inside is ndani, the stomach. The ends where you hook the hammock are the heads, ike. Um, the bottom of the hammock can be called the buttocks, so that's jana. Um, the edge of the hammock is rua gishe. Rua is the word for mouse. In the context of a project called uh, Spatial Language and Cognition in Mesoamerica, we build these toys, which we like to call chunches. Um, and uh, presented them um, to speakers of the language. Actually, this, pro this particular project um, involved 15 researchers working with 15 different languages. Um, so I was in charge of working with speakers of Juchitan Zapotec. Um, and so we would present these toys um, in various different contexts, but we were looking to see if the body part terms could be used to name these weird objects and their parts. So it was very interesting because, for example, uh, with regards to this toy, um, the word na for arm was used to name these um, protrusion, protrusions. Um, some speakers decided that these were ñe, so legs. Um, some people thought that this was the head and named it Ike. Some people thought it was the stomach and named it Ndani. Um, with this little guy, um, a lot of people call these Diaga, which are the ears. Um, this, we're not surprised, were called Na, hands or arms. Um, but um, there were times when some of the speakers decided that these were the feet, Nye. Uh, but some of the people thought that these were the legs, ñe, as well. So depending on how the person conceptualized a toy and decided to orient it, sometimes the, the naming would change. And also you can find out that, for example, if I put one of these toys on the table and I want to say, uh, I want the speaker to answer the question, what is, uh, where is the toy? The person will say something like, um, toy face table. 
because the word face, lu, can function to express the fact that um, the toy is on the primary surface or, or the most salient surface of the table. Or for example, if I had chewing gum underneath the table, uh, the speaker would say something that is roughly equivalent to chewing gum buttocks table. Um, so you need to find out ways, creative ways of um, getting your speaker to tell you these things. I started in 2003 working with the data slips. I started to database shortly thereafter. Um, I finished the databasing work. I finished about half of the verification work. And now um, I'm working, I'm editing the um, database. And just to give an idea, for every single lexical entry, so for every single noun or every single verb, I spend about an hour um, fixing things around, making sure everything's correctly spelled, uh, making sure I have collected all the examples that I have and they are listed properly in the um, entry uh, and so on and so forth. It's fascinating, it's a lot of work, but it's fascinating to see the um, inner workings of a language to the detail of you know, looking at little words, little particles, and how they uh, are put together to build this fabulously interesting language.